Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to the intersectionality webinar, a key tool for the inclusive and sustainable development. My name is Cecilia Ballesteros. I work in the uh, team with indigenous people and uh, Afro uh, descendant from the FAO Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean. And this time, I am in charge of moderating this uh, webinar. To begin, I would like to tell you that we have simultaneous translation, English, Spanish, and French. And you can access to the language of your choice, clicking in the world icon below in the screen, in the right side. And then you can choose your language. We deeply thank your presence at this time that we have summoned with our partners, governments, social organizations, local communities, indigenous people and Afro-descendant communities, the academia, FAO colleagues at regional global level and other agencies of the United Nations system to share the outcome of a major work, which is the guideline for the incorporation of intersectionality approach in programs and projects of rural sustainable development programs. This guideline was technically and financially supported by the John Program on Gender Approach, the transformative gender approach, in order to accomplish uh, food security and nutrition. To continue, we would like to invite Mr. Luis Verducci, uh, Office in Policy and Leader of the Regional Two Office of the Regional Office of FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean, to share some key insights in regard to this initiative. Luis, please go ahead. Thank you, Cecilia. It is a pleasure to be able to be with you, participate in the launching of this guideline. This uh, guideline we saw from the start, so many people involved, such a beautiful effort. And I think it's a guideline that will be key in order to improve our work. I uh, will be sharing some broad ideas. We'll have a long time to discuss, but I will start as follows. In Latin America and the Caribbean, the inequality matrix is uh, set by five main structural pillars, social stratum, gender, ethnic and racial condition, the territory and the reality. So to make these gaps visible in this type of events is key in order to deepen the understanding of social inequality in the region, and also to elaborate, implement public policies that are able to have an influence specifically, so as to overcome those issues that reproduce poverty, exclusion, discrimination. For instance, if we consider the territorial dimension of inequalities, the first area is that the percentage of people and the poverty line and uh, systemic poverty is higher in the rural as compared to the urban areas. Also, in Latin America, poverty and extreme poverty is in percentages that are higher among the indigenous people and uh, Afro-descendant people. And in both indicators also, it prevails in higher degree among women in Latin America and the Caribbean are poorer as compared to men. So all uh, these uh, differences, uh, those figures show an overlapping of gaps of inequality that reinforce among themselves. So here, the guideline is a first uh, approach in order to have better projects, better design, so as to have a better approach to rural communities that allow us somehow to address articulately the several conditions of inequality. Gender, for instance, is a variable that extends the scope of poverty in the countries of our region. In Ecuador and Bolivia, for instance, the indigenous households with a female uh, house head has 5.8% and 3.5% respectively, more likelihood of being poor as compared to the other households. So 
uh, this uh, network or uh, let's say combination of factors will generate a condition that will be very difficult from isolated programs or specific actions so that we can be able to overcome the problems associated to poverty, hunger that once again are higher among indigenous people and women as compared within the national and regional average. So if we don't want to leave anyone behind, it is extremely important to see in a wider and articulated and interdisciplinary, intersectional, as the guideline proposed fashion. And what is the contribution of the guideline? Intersectionality is a analysis approach, a methodology, the purpose of which is to recognize the different type of inequalities that are generated due to the intersection of social uh, fashions that model the life of people and social groups. It helps us and allow us to recognize and address the simultaneous presence of several dimensions that societies organize themselves and usually they distribute the power in an unbalanced fashion and therefore we have limitations for the full exercise of the rights of people and uh, groups so gender ethnic race age territorial origin are categories that do not operate isolately or independently from the historical context where it is located. Sometimes that dimensions are overlapping so that they increase the load of inequality. Uh, having different experience among people and the groups and possibilities to have access to well-being and welfare. That implies and that means that those dimensions need to be addressed in an articulate fashion. And we think that the guideline, it is somehow, it will be a key uh, stepping stone for uh, us who work in the uh, development field, in our case, a rural development, in order to overcome in a sustainable fashion those uh, barriers that people face in the rural area. And why is it so relevant to have this type of guideline available? Well, the guideline was envisioned and designed with a lot of love and effort with many partners in order to support the intersectional approach and the actions aimed at sustainable development. And therefore, it will be available from agencies, institutions that would like to guide their teams in that more comprehensive, articulated, and intersectional understanding, identifying conceptual keys and methodological keys, and driving the adoption of this approach in their activities and uh, spheres of management. We believe from FAO that is more and more necessary that the governments integrate in the intersectionality approach in the public policies, in their legal frameworks and uh, policies instruments so as uh, to be able to respond in a more efficient manner the challenges that are posed. So from FAO, we are very happy to share that guideline and it will be useful so as to eliminate hunger, poverty in the region, generating more prosperity, extending and expanding the freedom of people that live in the rural area. It is an open speech. People, organizations from the private world, from the civil organization, from managers, from development agencies in the territory, anyone can use them. So we hope it is a very useful instrument in your daily work. I'm sure that our team will be very useful. And I'm sure also that it will be very useful for several other people that have been involved that are committed to make this world a better world, more prosperous, sustainable, and inclusive. So I wish you a great working session. Congratulations for the whole team that was involved and that we can have success in this workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Luis, for your kind words. Thank you for that uh, 
view that open doors for the use of this guideline in the territory so as to see in a different manner, a more inclusive fashion, so as to have better outcomes with all the actions and specifically in the collective work. Next, and on behalf of the Latin American School of Social Science, Flaxo Argentina, an entity that actively participated in the elaboration of this guideline. We welcome Ms. Maria del Calmin Tamargo. She's a professor, researcher, that is member of the technical team of the gender area of Flaxo Argentina. I would like to invite her to share her view in regards to this. It is a pleasure to have you here, Maria del Carmen, and we are here to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia, and thank you to all of you. For us, uh, this has been a collaborative working process, a very interesting team, not only from the team that we set up in the gender area in Flaxo to address uh, the challenges of this technical assistance and this collaboration, but also from the reflexive collaborative work we did with the FAO team. I convey the uh, greetings from Dolores Blondet and the director and Gloria Fernandez who coordinate the whole team. And for us, it is always um, important, these type of instances in terms of articulating theory and action through uh, the contribution for spaces and planning processes for the project design that directly connect with the realities of uh, communities and territories. For us, uh, this was a challenging process and complex at the same time, sometimes difficult, and the task of contributing in the integration of two transformative approaches, gender approach from which we work and uh, intersectional approach, and to do so in a very specific fashion that can be expressed and become feasible in the design of interventions. And always emphasizing and the relevance of keeping these processes in a collaborative participative strategies where uh, the voice of the people is included and the target groups of the action in such a fashion that this possibility of integrating theory, concepts, and uh, instruments that allow to work from a conceptual standpoint in the understanding of uh, complex realities that this intersectional approach and gender approach allow to address. That is a learning for all of us. And we consider that it will be very interesting to uh, see the experiences and uh, the learning that stem from the use of this guideline. So we're very pleased and happy uh, for uh, being able to end this process and be part and participating today from the launching of this guideline. So again, we're deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Maria del Carmen, and as you well said, it was a hard work with a lot of debate, collaboration, analysis. And now we see the fruit of the outcome uh, that is so interesting. And we are very grateful for your words. And I would like to invite you to dive on the presentation of this guideline with the FAO team that together with Flaxo had the challenge to develop it. And in that team, if you allow me, to mention those that have been participating by FAO. We have Alejandra Safe, specialist on gender and value change from the FAO team in Rome. In the, in the sub-regional team for Mesoamerica and Panama, Veronica Chica Martinez, specialist on gender and indigenous people. And in the regional office of FAO in Santiago, we had Claudia Britos, a policy officer, expert in gender and social and institutional system. Mauricio Mireya, 
and policy offers for indigenous uh, peoples and social inclusion, Katarina Ivanovic, specialist on gender, and myself, Cecilia Ballesteros. So let's allow ourselves to have a following messages. Let's go with the video now. regional, te quería comentar que vamos a trabajar en un territorio indígena. La idea del proyecto es trabajar con desarrollo forestal sostenible y para ello vamos a valorar las prácticas tradicionales. Si sí, no se escucha. Según los diagnósticos y los pedidos. Perdón, y además se han equivocado de video. Can hear the video really and I believe you are playing the wrong uh, clip. rurales y 20% con juventudes rurales. ¿Cómo lo ves? Suena bien el trabajo con bosque nativo, pero. Someone, someone who were with the IT team who can uh, help us. Someone or an indigenous uh, person who is a woman. To me, that's not relevant because I cannot put apart my indigenous identity from being a woman. In fact, I'm not sure I want to put them apart. What I want is people not to use my identity to justify my punishment or my or putting me ahead of uh, putting me aside of uh, structures and practices of the society. When you look at me, what is it that you see? A man from an indigenous people or an indigenous people who is a man? To me, that's not even relevant because I cannot separate my indigenous identity from being a man. In fact, I'm not sure I want to do so. What I want is for people not to use my identity to justify my punishment or putting me aside of the structures and practices of the society. When you look at me, what is it that you see? A, wo a woman that is part of an Afro-descendant people or some an Afro-descendant pe person who is a woman. To me, it's not, that's not even relevant because I cannot separate my Afro-descendant identity from being a woman. In fact, I don't even know that I want to put them apart. What I do want is for people not to use my identity to justify my punishment or putting me aside of the structures and practices of the society. What is it that you see when you, when you see us? Please uh, stay with that question throughout the presentation. And now, Catalina and Veronica, you have the floor. Thank you. Let me share my screen. May I? Please go ahead. So, when you uh, look at me, what is it that you see? Why an indigenous woman living in a rural area in Latin America is suffering greater poverty and exclusion than the rest of the population? Those are the questions that we ask ourselves when we began with this uh, challenge of uh, building this manual of intersectionality. Why certain groups of uh, people, depending on their ethnic, uh, racial identity, gender, age, uh, have the highest uh, rates of uh, rural poverty and vulnerability? This is the starting point. And why? Because we have clear evidence that, that despite that we do recognize the con significant contributions of those populations of the Afro-descendant indigenous people, rural people, uh, farmers, they are facing a greater, uh, the greater inequality in Latin American poverty and extreme poverty in the rural area. The percentage is much higher among these people, mainly 
indigenous people, followed by Afro descendants, and then non indigenous and Afro descendant. Same is true with uh, women, but, uh, where there's more poverty and, uh, and extreme poverty among women than uh, the than men of the three ethnic racial groups. 2018, nearly one out of three people from between 15 to 24 were living in a poverty situation. Um, it's important uh, to recognize these uh, inequalities faced by young people. Among indigenous, 29.9% uh, of men and 30.0% of women are in, uh, in a situation of extreme rural poverty. And it, this is even higher among women compared to men. Also, not only poverty, but uh, food insecurity and nutritional insecurity. Again, we have this gap, age, gender, ethnic and racial gap. In 2020, 41.8% of women in Latin America suffered some sort of uh, food in, uh, insecurity compared to 32.2% among men. Clearly, there is a gap, it's a clear gap problems dealing with poverty, both malnutrition, hunger, are even greater in indigenous groups and women compared to the other groups. In a survey, this is important because after the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, this situation of inequality actually increased. 22% of um, young people said that uh, they were concerned that the, the lack of uh, food that uh, there was a 45% among indigenous youth. This, it is not only younger people, but indigenous uh, young people. This is important to emphasize. Catalina, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, uh, we want to reinforce this point on the land ownership which is a key resource for thinking of uh, equality, a substantial equality with and then sustainable development, because that is a critical resource for access, access to, to things such as water, forest. If we look at what happens with women, again, we find a major gap. Only 30% of the rural women in our region owned farming lands on, on, on average. Likewise, uh, for indigenous peoples, even though they control, they use uh, nearly 330, 380 million hectares in forestry, which accounts for 30% of the total forests in Latin America and the Caribbean, they face uh, a different um, inter-ethnical challenges and difficulties uh, to make these uh, resources to be used so that inequality and poverty situations they face are effectively decreased. Next slide, please. This also affects us in terms of climate change. We can see that the climate change is uh, enhanced in terms of effect, uh, in terms of the vulnerabilities as a result of poverty and inequality faced by these groups. So uh, indigenous peoples, Afro-descendants, uh, women, in many cases, young people uh, are more vulnerable uh, uh, to uh, climate change as a result of these inequalities. Thus, we can see that inequalities are overlapping and uh, in this uh, guideline, we suggest the, given the uh, FAO mandate and the uh, work we have around policies and, and, and safeguards, mainly to address gender, territorial, uh, age, and ethnical and racial inequalities. So like Luis said, intersectionality is understood as an, as an approach, a way to see the reality that will allow us to better understand these inequalities in a more comprehensive manner. And in this way, 
such as the surveys, the solutions, uh, uh, which are system-wide and therefore more effective. So intersectionality, it's an approach and a methodology for analysis. It's a way to see the social world, a way to see how this world, especially in Latin America, show these in overlapping inequalities affecting the life of different people and uh, groups or collectives. So we've uh, produced a guideline, which this is uh, where you can find it, which we would like you to uh, uh, review so that you can learn about, about it and uh, its proposals. Thank you for your time now. Let's uh, look at a couple of uh, video clips that will emphasize the importance of why working with this intersectional approach. Cecilia, as to the new regional project, we will be working in an indigenous territory. So the idea of the project is uh, working with forestry, sustainable forestry development, and for that will be value the traditional practices of the community. According to diagnosis and requests, we need a work plan where it's 30 percent uh, indigenous people, 15 percent rural women, and 20 percent uh, rural youth. So how do you feel about that? Sounds, uh, but uh can't you see that we we are talking about the same people three times on the row so in summary in 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 this territory we have indigenous groups afro descendant and uh some and these people are facing different levels of poverty and uh youth are facing challenges to gain access to decent jobs. So the idea is to have a public program for training and a labor training and, and, and insertion for the youth. Great insertion, uh, insertion, labor insertion for youth, it's uh, critical, but we do need a, uh, an idea of, just to understand how each one of the groups is experiencing poverty and how this relates to the, the labor difficulties of the youth. Probably there are major differences among them. Also, it is uh, critical to know the differences between the inequality experiences of women and men. As you know, our project is a part of the design of a national plan for rural development. And among the different actions, we have strengthening of uh, value chain, the focus on gender, to online training for uh, agribusiness development, funding for rural producers and public procurement for uh, family agriculture. Sounds good, but I, have a, but I have a question for you. I don't know, are, are you considering uh, first the uh, challenges uh, for uh, challenges of connectivity in the rural area, which may affect the training you're thinking of and the various services of care. You need to strengthen the, those uh, among the territory. Those are critical if you want rural women to get the benefit of it. Very well. That is the situation that we have been working, where we have a lot of fun recording these videos. And these are common day-to-day -day situations when we work on these projects. And we always have the question, what else do we need to see? What have we skipped and we take for granted? And we make these mistakes and we leave outside. Or we don't generate the opportunity for real inclusive policies in this area. And that's why I would like to invite you to continue to analyzing this inside, but at the same time, we'd like to hear your comments in regards to what is the contribution of this guideline? What is your perception? 
about the guideline. And uh, Takon Diaya, our colleague, officer of senior gender of the transforma rural transformation and inclusive and gender equality of FAO. Taco, welcome. Um, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I'm really pleased to be here today. And my sincere apologies that I'm not speaking Spanish. I wish I could. So I promise that next time I will uh, do my sharing in, in Spanish. So please uh, bear with me today in English. So I'm really pleased to give some insight into this uh, practical guide for the incorporation of an intersectional approach in sustainable uh, rural development programs and, and projects. So let me start by highlighting some of the characteristics of the guide. So the guide is timeless. As uh, you know, we are faced with multiple uh, crises, whether it's about poverty, uh, food crisis, health with the COVID-19 pandemic, conflicts in some parts of the world, and climate change. And when we face such a complex set of crises and challenges, we need integrated and multidimensional approaches to address the multiple forms of inequalities, marginalization and exclusion that women and girls face in agri-food systems. Um, it is also important to look at the way those uh, inequalities are interconnected. So therefore this guide acknowledges different and intersecting forms of discrimination uh, such as disability, sexual orientation, social class, religion, among others. And it also recognizes that people's lives are shaped by their identities, their relationships, and other social factors. So that was the first characteristics. The second one I would like to focus on is rights-based because we know that the guide, for instance, brings together different frameworks on gender equality and women's empowerment, uh, those on the rights of indigenous and Afro-descendants people. It, it also uh, addresses issues of the youth and, and, and other groups. So that was my second um, review of the characteristics. The third one is about the relevance. Because in any developmental um, initiatives, the idea is to better address the specific needs and priorities of our target groups. So the more lenses we wear to see multiple dimensions of inequalities, the more efficient and transformative we can address such inequalities through our actions. So the guide is also based on a life cycle approach. And as you know, each stage of the life cycle ent entails specific opportunities, challenges, and risks. And it is a fact that there are stages that are more critical than others. Age is an important factor that may, might also lead to other social inequalities in childhood, in adolescence, among youth, in adulthood, and in old age. So the guide is also gender transformative, and we know that gender transformative approaches um, can inform programs and, and interventions that create opportunities for individuals through challenging the gender norms, uh, promoting positions of social and political influence of women in communities, and also addressing uh, power inequalities between persons of different gender. So the GTAs, as we know, tackle the root causes of gender inequality and they trigger a transformative change process that leads to gender equality and women's empowerment. We know also that the guide presents 
not only uh, theoretical framework, but also conceptual aspects and the way those can be uh, put into practice, looking into different areas such as the overlapping factors, uh, challenging the, the predetermined categories of vulnerabilities. So we also know that this guide provides an overview of innovative and culturally sensitive methodologies for the identification of inequalities and the design of strategies for the planning and implementation of uh, programs and projects in close collaboration with rural populations. We also know that the guide is collaborative because this type of approach calls for partnerships, for collaboration among teams and partners, uh, fighting against uh, working in silo, it's shown looking inside their own tunnels, uh, which often compromise uh, effective results while the duplicating efforts and resources. We also know that the guide uses a territorial approach and the territory along with being the physical location of economic activities and processes is also a means of social transformation. So it is important to re-emphasize that an intersectional approach must not lose sight of the territory as an analytical tool and that um, as said by uh, Sedgman and, and Berdege in 2004, the territory is a space with a socially uh, constructed identity. And for some of us who work on the other issues, we know also that uh, rural areas are the ones where social norms are, are much more kept alive and other uh, behaviors that also undermine uh, women and girls uh, empowerment in agri-food systems. So I would like to, to also um, acknowledge that the guide is really a great uh, example of what internal cross-sectoral work at FAO can harvest because it really uh, fostered uh, collaboration between different teams not only in headquarters, but also in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. So we also want to uh, acknowledge the very rich and fruitful collaboration between FAO and the Latin American Faculty of Social Sciences in developing uh, the guide. So the guide poses key questions for inclusive rural development, I would say rural transformation as well, uh, which demand solid responses. And those questions are, for instance, why do certain groups of people, depending on their origin or social conditions, suffer higher rates of poverty and vulnerability? And uh, therefore, they also, um, you know, in the face of that greater vulnerability, what can be done to reduce those inequalities? For, for example, uh, where we have gender, ethnic, racial, age, and territorial uh, identities that intersect in sustainable rural development projects. So addressing some of those questions will allow FAO to challenge uh, structural barriers and rising inequalities in order to contribute to the achievement of the SDG goals and the pledge to leave no one behind. We all know, for instance, that the denial of, of entitlements to assets, key resources and services, and the denial of the right to participate on equal terms in economic, social, cultural and political arenas are impediments to sustainable rural transformation. So to conclude, I would like to congratulate the authors of this guide and for an amazing resource. 
it's already an important uh, achievement, which go well beyond Latin America and the Caribbean, contributing to inclusive uh, development in all regions to ensure the fulfillment of commitments to equality, uh, specifically to the empowerment of women and the eradication of, of poverty. Uh, where do we move from here? Next week, we are organizing an event on intersectionality, and I'm pleased to, um, to acknowledge that we will really uh, use this guide in Latin America as, as a guidance, a very important guidance to also further inform how, for instance, in our own division at headquarters, the Inclusive uh, Rural Transformation and Gender Equality Division, we are going to build on your guide to further bring together different areas, such as uh, gender, uh, but also our work on child labor, youth employment, social protection, and, and other areas together. Um, so I wanted to, again, commend you for being pioneers of this approach. And, um, and I would say bye for now. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you very much, dear Taco, for joining us in this instance and for your precise words. Now I would like to invite to hear the words from Diego Lucas, a policy office of FAO and coordinator of a gender transformative approach to accomplish food security and nutrition. Leo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Uh, dear colleagues and participants, it's a great pleasure to be here today with you. Um, it is my pleasure to close this webinar and on behalf of the joint program on gender transformative approaches for food security and nutrition. Since 2019, the UN based, uh, the UN Rome based agencies, namely FAO, IFED and WFP, have been implementing the joint program in collaboration with and through financial support of the European Union. The joint program aims to contribute to the achievement of Sustainable Development Goal 2, which is about zero hunger, by supporting the RBAs and their partners to embed gender transformative approaches in their policy dialogues, programs, working modalities and institutional culture. Generating knowledge on gender transformative approaches to enhance food security, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture lies at the very heart of the joint program. However, you may ask, what are gender transformative approaches? They are a set of participatory approaches that seek to actively examine, challenge, and transform the underlying causes of gender inequalities rooted in discriminatory social structures and institutions. Gender transformative approaches promote changes in gender relations, opportunities and resources by challenging the root causes of gender discrimination, including discriminatory gender norms, unequal power and social relations, and structures that create and reinforce gender inequalities. Intersectionality, as we heard in this seminar, is one of the key characteristics of gender transformative approaches. Indeed, gender transformative approaches recognize that women often experience multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination throughout their lives. It is therefore absolutely essential to generate knowledge on how to understand and address women's life realities and multiple social barriers that to their empowerment and full potential. As demonstrated today, this guide is a very good example of collaboration within FAO and with an external partner. In addition, it is a major and a very strong contribution towards more inclusive development interventions. It is in this context that the GPGTA 
supported the preparation and release of this guide as a key tool for sustainable development and a vote uh, free of hunger and discrimination. FAO in the framework of the GPGTA is now committed to supporting the piloting of the guide in Latin America to build the capacity of FAO staff and its partners to leave no one behind and apply an intersectional lens in their work. This webinar, in my view, provided a really wonderful opportunity to learn more about how to integrate intersectional aspects within programs and projects based on the experience and expertise of FAO's colleagues and partners from Latin America and the headquarters. I would like to thank you all for your participation in this seminar. And I look forward to working with you in the framework of the GPGTA to really make sure that gender transformative approaches become a key aspect of our work in the field. Thank you so much. Thank you, Libor. We're coming to the end of this uh, presentation, this launching, and before closing, I'd like to ask someone from the team, if you could please post the link to access the guideline, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today, uh, for contributing to this collective uh, effort terms of diversity, opening the path for opportunities for everyone uh, so that no one is left behind. Have a great day wherever you are, and I will we will be seeing each other soon.